This morning, we're starting in the Pacific, and this video will end in the Atlantic. Join us as we take the 40-mile voyage from ocean to ocean. Good morning and welcome aboard day 12 on the Norwegian Bliss, where we started in LA and are headed towards Miami. Our final moments of the Pacific starts with a view of the Bridge of the Americas, an arch bridge that connects North and South America. That is technically our last view of the Pacific. By the time we see an ocean again, it will be the Atlantic. Before we make it to the Atlantic, our journey will take roughly 10 hours. We first need to rise about 85 feet above sea level so we can travel through 40 miles of rivers and lakes, then lower back down to sea level before making it to the other ocean. If we were going down to the traditional locks, we would have stayed straight, which is down that path. But because we're going through the new locks, we've gone left. We're going that way. In 1914, the Panama Canal officially opened, connecting the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, drastically cutting down the amount of time to transport goods from one side of America to the other via water. While those same historic locks are in service today, our massive Norwegian Bliss is almost double the size of the biggest ship it can take. Thankfully though, in 2016, Panama opened up a massive expansion that added a new set of locks that can accommodate bigger ships. While the size is the biggest difference, another notable difference is the new locks use tugboats to guide the ship through, while the historic locks use electric locomotives with lines to guide the ship through. So if you're wondering why it looks different from other videos or pictures that you might have seen, it's different because of the locks. We're now making our way into the Coakley Locks. One of the coolest things that we're doing is we're just watching TV in the inside of the cabin, then we can go outside and we see what we're happening see what's happening right beside us. As the doors for the locks close up, we're gonna go ahead and head over to breakfast because, you know, everyone's gonna be watching the first lock and wanna see the whole process. But we have five more, two more on this side in the Co Coakley locks and three more in the Aqua Clara locks. So we have enough time to see the locks and us in action. But since it's the first one, Usually you want to see it, but I think the better idea is to go to breakfast right now because everyone just wants to look at the locks right now. And then as it goes on, the novelty of it will go down and then things will be less crowded on the outer decks. Right now, if you take a look at the front deck and the bow, which is not usually open on this specific ship, the Bliss does not have access to the front. They do have access to it right now, but it is crowded. So that's why we're going to go to breakfast right now as people are most excited for the first lock. So the crazy thing right now is as we'll be eating breakfast, we're actually, instead of going forward or backwards, left or right, we're going to be going straight up, which is not a movement you typically do on a cruise ship, which is, I think, the most mind-blowing thing about this is that we're going up. They're still closing off the lock right now, but breakfast right now. Let's do it. They are doing announcements throughout the ship as well, in which we got the announcement that we are going in the upward direction as the uh, basin empties out and fills up ours, or I don't know their words. What am I saying? It's early in the morning. For those of you interested in the pool deck, yeah, it's kind of busy, but really no. So if you're here on the Panama Canal cruise and you really don't care about the Panama Canal, jump in the pool. That'll probably be the least busiest time you'll see on this ship. And that and other ports. <laughs> then the other really cool thing is, not that we can see it, it is kind of hard to see on the screen. It's really dark, even in, in person. But they do have the bridge cam right here as well. And they have some information for us, giving us the, uh, the times, the Panama Canal times, and then when we're gonna be passing and whatnot. I just, I, I can't show it to you. You can maybe barely make it out right there, but I could also barely make it out here in real life. So that's actually just more of a complaint against Norwegian screen and really awesome that they do offer that. Oh yeah, definitely much emptier than normal. Still people here, you know, people aren't gonna not eat on a cruise ship, but this is the lightest I've seen breakfast the entire cruise and it's currently nine. We walked right in and found a seat. I've just come to the realization that we haven't actually eaten breakfast in the buffet on the entire 12 days we've been on this ship. So I'll give you a quick glance of what they have. They have a lot of American breakfast things, not too many other things to choose from, but they have tons of omelet stations all throughout the buffet, so that's really nice. If you like omelets, you're not going to have too bad of a wait depending on how busy it is. But yeah, the novelty of eating food and going up I think is really cool. Except I guess if you really wanted to do that, you could just eat food while on an elevator and that would be the same thing. And like that, we're moving forward. So in the time it took to eat breakfast, we were able to go up 
and start moving forward. We just got out of breakfast and this is not a usual thing, but they did call for a medical team. And I guess by the looks of it, they're gonna actually bring on a gangway and we're probably gonna disembark a passenger or someone who's in the medical facility. So lesson to you, if you're ever in the Panama Canal and you, God forbid, have something happen to you, uh, they will get you off here. It's as if it's a port. They'll, they'll stop and they'll offload you, it looks like. That's kind of crazy. I didn't, didn't know that was a thing. That's one of those things that you really hope to never learn, but very fascinating when it does happen. After the medical emergency, we have started moving forward to the next lock. So the really cool thing is in the atrium, they're also broadcasting the bridge cam. So that's really nice too. The sun deck was really hard to see, so it's nice that the atrium's playing it. But I just wanted to mention that we did see the guests that were offloaded. And I'm happy to say, though, I don't know the exact case that is happening, but she, the one who was offloaded, looked like they were very active still. They waved goodbye and whatnot, and it doesn't look so dire. Obviously, it was dire enough for them to have to get off the ship, but it wasn't dire enough for them to be in that critical state. So, you know, hopes and prayers that they get better and that everything's okay. But just, I just started thinking about it, it almost made me cry, the thought that you could go through, like this, like the Panama Canal, is the highlight of the cruise. This is what everyone wants to do. And that you could have made it all the way, almost there, and you have to get off in the Panama Canal, like the bucket list thing. You get there and you get off in the middle of locks, that has to be one of the, that was just heartbreaking to me. Um, you had to think, like that, that would be just the worst, to have to get off in the place that you're looking forward to the most. I mean, I don't know. Um, obviously, health and everything is the most important thing, so hopefully things will go well. Like that, we, uh, we're just gonna move on, on to the next lock, we're moving in. As soon as we're done with the third lock, we'll be over into the lake. And we'll be doing that for a few hours. <sighs> crazy morning, crazy morning, but just, um, there's one more place I wanna go visit before we finish up with the third lock, so let's go ahead and do that. But seriously, just look at that, because we're gonna raise one more time, and on deck six, we are just below, just below the top. That is so wild. Typically, it's only a crew sun deck, but today, we get the benefit, watch your step, of going to the bow. This one I have to try. This is worth a photo. A ship that passes through one direction uses on average 52 million gallons of fresh water. That's roughly 100 Olympic sized swimming pools. They use fresh water to keep the salt water, plants and sea life separate from the two oceans, thus protecting their environments. That's a big reason why ships pay so much, somewhere in the hundreds of thousands, with the record being $1.1 million for one crossing. It's crazy to think about what it takes to operate and use the canal until you remember the alternative is to take the 8,000 nautical mile trip that can take months to get all the way around South America. The Panama Canal has been essential in connecting two oceans, two sides of the world, speeding up shipping and effectively changing this world's history through its connection. So if you're wondering if the Panama Canal is really worth the hype, let me just say not only is it an amazing feat of engineering, but this canal does way more than we even realize. So why not take a voyage through one time? So we're taking a break from the outside to come and cool off and watch people who are in the AC but just working up a sweat anyways. So we've come outside on the waterfront just to watch the side of the ship instead of the front. Something a little different. They call it the cut because they basically had to cut through this path to get us from the canals all the way to the lakes which we're heading to. So interestingly enough, on the Panama Canal, obviously there's directions going both ways, but here in the cut, this one section is about nine miles past that centennial bridge that we saw earlier all the way up to the end, only one direction at a time because they found that if two ships go by, they kind of get pulled together just uh, based on how tides and 
water physics and stuff work. Uh, so that's why they only have one ship going one direction. We're actually the last ship going northbound today, and then after that it'll all be southbound traffic. So one ship at a time for the cut. It was widened to make it for two ships, two ships of Panamax, which means the maximum size that a ship can be to get through the Panama Canal. And they made it wide enough for two ships to pass, and, that, and they found out that that was not a good idea. Like I said, they just draw closer to each other. And now that they have the Neo Panamax ships, uh, we are in a completely different category, the Norwegian Bliss being a big, big, big ship comparative to the Panamax specification, meaning Neo, meaning the new locks and a new specification. So uh, not even two, two Neo Panamax ships wouldn't be able to fit through this. So that's why one way traffic at a time. So we're the last ship for the northbound and then suddenly we'll start seeing southbound traffic and we'll be passing other ships on the lakes. So right now it's a cut to get us from the ocean to the lakes. And it's about to end fairly soon. Nine mile stretch, maybe about an hour of travel, less than. But the craziest thing is, is that that railroad right there, we were on just 24 hours ago, actually. Well, there's no train there now, but the track's still there, because that's how trains work. So we come to the other side, and you can see right about there is where the cut ended. And we're seeing our first signs of the opposite direction going. And it's a cruise ship. I don't recognize a cruise ship, but it's a cruise ship nevertheless. So now we can start seeing ships passing us in the opposite direction. I think that's really cool. It's been a little lonely on this path for a while. Borealis by Fred Olsen Cruise Lines. I think they might be a little too expensive for me to even know about them. Just taking a break from the action. Though it's not busy, the casino is actually open right now. So even though we're not actually out to international waters, they are, they are running the casino. That's definitely one of those questions where you always ask, like, hey, it's technically a sea day, because we're not actually visiting a port, though the Panama Canal is awesome. Uh, it's not a technical port, so it's more of a sea day. And it was one of my questions that if the casino would be open, it definitely is. Which just calls in the question, how does the whole international waters thing work with this, with cruise ships? I don't know, but I can tell you that it, at the very least, it's open, but it's, it's empty. I think everyone's kind of distracted with the uh, whole Panama Canal thing. At least I am. So in the lake between the two locks, we kind of just chilled and didn't play it. We were playing games and weren't doing too much. So now we've arrived to Aqua Clara, which is the one we saw yesterday in, last, in the last video. If you haven't seen that, you gotta see that too. But we're gonna head back to the bow because I think that's gonna be the best spot to see the locks and seeing us arrive. Welcome back to the bow. It's a little full because obviously we're going back to the locks so everyone's interested, but still. We might be able to find a spot. So we're arriving at Aqua Clara, and then the gates are already opening, and you can see the observation area where we were yesterday. Wow, it all comes back full circle. done it. We've made it to the Atlantic. That was maybe about an hour and a half or so that we just sat there and watched all three locks up in the bow. It was a really cool experience. It did feel like it took a while, but that was okay because we got to enjoy every single moment of it. And now we're going to go under one more bridge. So we're going to head up to the top and see how close we get with the smokestack. That just, uh, I saw the other one earlier and it kind of didn't look as amazing as I think it would is if we're up on deck 16. So that's what we're gonna do. So we've come up to the top deck and it's probably really windy, but that's okay because we're not gonna get the traditional view standing in front of the bridge where it comes up on us. We're gonna get the view of it going right over our heads if I don't get blown away from the wind. Oh my gosh. We have learned that it is 246 feet from the bottom of the bridge. So that's how much clearance we have. I don't know how tall the ship is, but I do know we're 20 decks high. So maybe I should have done my research on that one. Good job, me. It's still gonna be cool because it'll go right over our heads, just like all my jokes go over all of your heads. Atlanta. 
Atlantic Ocean. Now that we finally reached the Atlantic, we're sailing away towards the break, and as soon as we hit the break, that's it. We're on our way to our next destination, which is going to be Cartagena tomorrow. But I hope you enjoyed today's video in the Panama Canal. It was such a phenomenal day. It's one that you have to experience yourself. Thank you so much for watching today. As always, this isn't a goodbye, but just I'll see you real soon.